Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Campus Consortium's grant webinar. Featuring $60,000 Student Engagement Mobile Lab Grant Award winner, Central Carolina Technical College. In today's presentation, Brian Davis will share his journey on how Central Carolina Technical College utilizes grant and how you can apply for a similar grant. Moving on to the next slide, before we begin, I would actually like to thank our dear sponsors for all their support, without which we would not be able to bring these webinars to you. As you can see, some of our sponsors are Unified, Quick Launch, HDI, Black Belt Health, Salesforce. And if you would like to become one of our sponsors, you can email to Sharon, S-H-A-R-O-N dot DAS, D-A-S-S, at campusconsortium.org. We will take questions at the end of today's presentation that have been typed into the chat box or questions pane in the GoToWebinar control panel. Campus Consortium is a nonprofit organization that aims to reduce the cost of education. We started in 2003 by 14 universities, including University of Montana and Case Western Reserve University. As a consortium, we are now 37,000 institutions globally, Southeast Asia, UK, North America, and so forth. Some of the grants we provide are portal, mobile, identity management, single sign-on, attendance monitoring app, cloud hosting, Office 365 migration, and tech support, just to name a few. Everett University had actually won the Office 365 migration grant. Microsoft was actually charging them about $15 a mailbox, and due to our grant, the technology partner was then charging them anywhere from three to five dollars per mailbox. Johnson C. Smith University had gotten a grant for the student engagement app. Campus Safety app, the student engagement app, gave them a vision to have everything in one place, like the ERP, LMS, things that students would use on a day-to-day -day basis, like courses, grades, schedule, transcripts, GPA calculator. They are under implementation and they're gonna be going live very shortly. And we've got Kentucky Wesleyan College is live and happy and they were awarded the mobile campus and campus safety grant. They also opted in for the studio, which gives them the availability to create their own apps on a platform without coding. They are live in production. And the next slide, uh, as you can see, are the slides showing you uh, who are our grant award winners. We've got Rona Choke Chowan, uh, Geneva College, McKendry University. Our funding actually comes from our technology partners, sponsorships. We host a lot of Ed Talks, and some of our speakers for Ed Talks is Philip Long, Luis Gonzalez. These folks are well known and prominent in higher ed to drive the mission of Campus Consortium. We have some chief advisory members coming in from higher ed who advise us on how, on how we should select our technology partners. So Bob Turner from the University of Wisconsin-Madison is one of our cybersecurity heads to help us in delivering our decision. Now, if you can see the student engagement mobile app grant actually um, provides um, selected institutions a grant award up to $40,000 over a period of five years. And the reason that we ask a letter from the pr president highlighting the problem that the solution solved and why the grant would be helping in, in meeting these strategic objectives is so that the applicant can actually demonstrate a commitment to implementing the solution. So I'd like to now introduce to you Brian Davis, who is our presenter for the day. He is the Director of Information and Learning Technologies at Central Carolina Technical College, a two-year community technical college in Sumter, South Carolina, and part of the 16 institution technical college system 
for the state of South Carolina. With 25 years of experience working in and managing information technology departments and projects across diverse industries, Brian knows how to leverage technical resources to meet the demands of executive leadership, business managers, and customers efficiently and effectively. With a long history of successful IT project implementation, Brian specializes in identifying opportunities where technology can be used to solve time consuming business processes. Returning valuable human resource time back to the institution to improve overall employee and customer satisfaction. Brian holds a bachelor's degree in computer science from the University of Illinois and numerous professional certifications in project management, network engineering, and information security. Without further ado, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Mr. Brian Davis. Over to you, Brian. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, pleased to be here to talk a little bit about our successful implementation of um, Unified's mobile application solution. Um, this has been a great project for us, incredibly successful. We started this process about two years ago. Uh, when I first came to the college, we had nothing in a mobile application platform, but the majority of our nearly 4,000 FTE are millennial students who expect to carry our college around in the palm of their hand. So we embarked on a process to identify what our requirements would be for such an application, and we wanted something that was vendor agnostic. Um, we had held on to, for many years, a license for Aleutian's mobile application platform. As you can see, we're a banner institution. And it just did not provide the experience nor the branding that we wanted, and of course, being able to connect in services that were non-Aleutian uh, smoothly, seamlessly, and have one nice application platform to, to process forward with. So, um, you know, we have, we're a two-year institution, um, as um, the presenter said earlier, um, one of 16 colleges across the state of South Carolina. We award two-year um, degrees, we have a diploma programs, we have certificate programs, and about 30 articulation agreements with other four-year institutions across the state of South Carolina. Um, our if you kind of look here, we have a varied amount of technology to tie together. We're still on um, student uh, email is Gmail for us. We wanted our students to have access to their email easily. We have a problem with students reading emails in general, so we wanted to make it simple for them to carry that around with them. Um, we are on a Luminous 5 portal. We are using BIS or CAS solution as our SSO. It, we needed to be able to implement that, so there was a single sign-on experience making it easy to use. And for LMS, we're on D2L. Some of you may be on Blackboard or another product similar. Uh, all of that was part of our scope, and um, we succeeded at implementing all of that to this point. Uh, next slide, please. So the this is kind of what I covered a moment ago, but our objective here was to build our requirements. We did this, and this is something that, that I get asked a lot. How did you make this project successful? How did you get adoption? Um, we've had some of our colleges within our own system that have gone down the mobile app road somewhat unsuccessfully occasionally, and, and they've reached a point where they build an app, they deploy it, but yet no one ever uses it. And we decided to not make this an IT-only project. We made this a college-wide project, and we built a committee across all of our student services, academics, and administration levels. IT simply brought this to fruition, but everybody else at the college owns this. So it predominantly, the, the goal was to put in the students' hands everything they would do through our portal without them having to actually go to the portal for those functions. So things um, down from enrollment, looking at course schedules, uh, being able to access their financial aid information and where they are, um, finding out where their student billing information is, getting midterm grades, getting final grades, all of the self-service features that Banner provides, we wanted to implement in an applet form in the mobile app. Next slide. So this gives you a layout of, of kind of what our requirements were in a, in a nutshell. We wanted something that would run natively um, in Apple iOS and Android devices. We did not want to just scan our website. Um, we wanted something that was responsive to the browser, to the size of the screen that the uh, user had, whether they were on an iPhone, whether they were on an iPad, tablet, phone, didn't matter. We wanted them to have the same kind of experience. 
the other thing that we were looking for is something that would be consistent with our branding. We have our PR department, of course, that sort of controls all of that for us. Um, one of the things that the PR department did not like about the Aleutian solution for us is that it goes into the App Store, um, you download the Aleutian Go tool, if you will, and then you have to find your college among hundreds of others that are listed, and you never really get the branding that you want. We wanted something that represented us in the stores. Unified was able to help us with that. This is a very white box type product. Um, you brand it. It goes out in the stores. They look for your college. They download your application, and it stays with your branding. We also needed to make sure that it maintained confidentiality, privacy, all of our FERPA requirements that our records office requires. Um, they were able to meet those and describe those needs very well for us. Uh, the security is exemplary in this and the architecture of this is exemplary. Um, we're very pleased with it. It's not been an impact to our network resources. It's not been an impact um, to the performance of our systems. Um, our students are very pleased with it. Next slide. So as I mentioned earlier, we're on a CAS solution. Um, we needed to make sure that students had one easy way to access it using the single user ID and password that we provide them with and they control with self-service. Um, the other piece of this that's interesting is we needed it to be role-based. So our recruitment department uses this as a recruitment tool. Um, anyone can download the app free of charge off the store. Um, it provides all of our public information, so all of our Facebook, Twitter feeds, um, YouTube videos, everything that the PR department publishes we want it available. All of our college programs and information as well as our live schedule search available without authentication so that students, potential students, could come in and look and see what we have to offer from semester to semester. Once you are matriculated into the college and you're assigned a student ID number, you also get your Luminous user ID and password. That enables you to authenticate to the app. Once you authenticate, then you get access to all of the rest of the applications that are in place, which would be access to our emergency uh, notification system, access to all of the banner applets that I spoke about earlier, um, as well as any other information that we wanted to feed just to students or perhaps just to faculty and staff. So as some of you may be aware, in Luminous or any kind of portal solution where you're maintaining your central identity management, you have role-based accounting. Um, it's sensitive to that. So if you are a student, you get a certain view. If you're a faculty or staff member, you can either get the same view or different applets available to you. For instance, like time entry for human resources or grade entry for faculty. Um, those kinds of things we wanted to be flexible. So once the students activated that feature and they've logged into the app, they get the full features of the app, which starts providing them with all the information about their current registration status, where they are in the financial aid process, what their current student bill is, and ultimately their course schedule, um, our maps of our buildings, driving directions, um, walking directions, biking directions, if you're in a, a central city type campus, all of that's available um, geocoded uh, using some Google Map technology that's in there. Uh, works really well, our students love it. In fact, um, the thing I would say in general is, and I've gotten this from our records and admissions department frequently, students will walk in and of course they'll direct them to the registration lab, but they'll sit there in the um, registration area and just pull their phone out, register for classes, drop classes, add classes, and work with their advisor right there in their office. Um, everyone raves about this. They've really, really enjoyed it. The adoption level on this has been amazing. Um, I think to date we have about 3,700 devices that have downloaded and are currently actively using the app, which represents the vast majority of our FTE. Um, our faculty and staff have downloaded it so that they can um, mostly maintain access to our phone directory, which gives them instant access via email or telephone to all of the employees on campus. Um, it's been a, a great success for us. Next slide. And so those are the core core college and university services that we're providing, our employee directory. News and announcements, um, we have one source of information. One thing that people ask me a lot is, is the calendar separate? Do you have to maintain it and your portal calendar and your website calendar? We have one central calendar solution that's in our Luminous calendar and we port that information out both to the app and also into our website. That way, when something's registered on campus and there's an event, it goes in one place and there's only one place you have to keep up with it. Um, integration's awesome for that. Uh, the event calendar is great. The campus maps are uh, excellent. 
Um, and then we integrate with all of our directory, our news, calendar feeds, all of that's fed back into the app. Again, one single source of information maintained through our PR department, and then it feeds out to every other platform that we have. Um, the other piece of it that's very interesting on the back end is the analytics. Um, the analytics are excellent. It helps you keep track of the types of devices that have deployed your app, how many, what the usage is by hour, by day, so you can track trends. Um, and one of the most important things that we track is the applets within the app that are being used um, so that we can decide what's actually making an impact, what students are using, and if we have something that's just not being used at all, and we maybe should consider either retooling it or removing it completely. To that point, something else that we wanted to make sure we had as well is things inherently are going to break along the way, especially when you have integrated services that the app feeds in and out of. We didn't want to have to disable our app completely to fix a problem and then eventually bring it back online. So the mobile application is a platform. Everything within it is considered an applet. If we have something that's broken, something we're working on or something we're upgrading, we can simply surgically reach in and turn that feature off that icon will disappear on the screen for a time being while everything else continues to work. Um, that's kept our uptime on the app uh, to, to be almost 100%. We um, rarely have any downtime with the solution at all. Um, the other piece of it that we wanted as well is to kind of keep up with all of our contact and address books and to keep up a native address book as well for the phone. So all of the phone features are integrated. The next step for us, now that we have a solid platform for our ERP integration and our D2L integration, is to move forward with features that only the mobile application can really provide. So we're deploying some technology in our college for, um, say, Bluetooth beaconing, being able to walk into one of your facilities and being able to push news or events that are happening right there at that particular campus. We, we cover a four county area. There are events going on at every campus every day. They're not always the same thing. And uh, we wanna make sure students, when they walk onto one of those campuses are aware of what's happening that day. Also that same technology is used with our ENS if we have a, an emergency scenario as well. Next slide. And this was, was our big issue. We, we really didn't know how we were gonna finance this. So um, we reached out through, um, once we had our, our requirements put together, a bid process and Campus Consortium uh, was able to offer us the grant program, uh, which saved us on the implementation cost. It allowed us to get started on this earlier than later. Um, we probably would not be as far ahead without it. Uh, it kept the cost affordable so that we can continue to offer this technology to our students at a small two-year institution like we are. Um, the implementation time frame was fairly short. Um, I get asked this frequently as well, how much of my IT resources do I have to put into this to bring this to fruition? I would say very little. Um, Unified is who Campus Consortium connected us with this, to solve this problem. They did all the heavy lifting. We had some discovery work to do in the front end just to let them know about our environment and what needed to be created in order to be able to connect this in. Um, we answered some questions back and forth. We did some testing. We made some modifications to the apps to meet our student services needs. They were easy to work with, did all of that for us. Um, we just managed the project from our end, fed the information at, at timely rates to them. Um, my IT staff really did not have to do much other than configure some VPN connectivity and configure some um, user accounts, uh, management accounts on our side in order to provide the connectivity that was necessary. Next slide. We implemented this, as you can see, we went live in September of 2017. So we're a little over a year um, into a live status. It, like I said, we've practically got an entire adoption across the campus, both in our students side and also on our faculty and staff side. Um, everyone uses it. I see folks using it every single day. Um, the feedback that comes through our PR department and through our help desk uh, helps us kind of shape this. Um, it works very well. Um, we, like I said, the downtime has been almost non-existent. So it stays up, it functions. We've reconfigured it several times. Uh, Unified has been awesome to work with in that regard. Um, I would say that probably one of the best technical companies I've worked with for an implementation like this ever. Next slide. And I think that, that count might be a little bit low now. I think we were over half at the time uh, that we built this. We now almost have full adoption um, with the FTEs. The, um, 
the important thing for us is how do we keep growing this so that it doesn't become stale. We treat this kind of like we do our website. If you never change anything and you never put anything else in place, eventually people stop using it, they stop coming to it, they stop looking at it. We have an annual survey of programs and services which goes out to our entire student population. We also have a separate survey that goes to our faculty and staff. And a set of questions that are in those surveys are about the mobile application, how is it functioning for you, what options, and we usually provide a menu of things that we're thinking about deploying to get some idea of where we should prioritize those uh, requests. And then we also provide students and faculty and staff the option to free entry and let us know, you know, what would you like to see, what kind of future enhancements um, could feed into our roadmap. All of those get um, compiled together and we review them annually uh, with the same committee that built the app, prioritize them, and then look at implementing those in, in priority order. Um, the success of this for us, we were the first college in our system to implement such a, a solution. Um, we have a, a regular meeting with all of the CIOs um, from all of the different colleges in the system. And we at least have a couple of those colleges that are already working with uh, Unified to implement a solution like this today. Others are uh, interested, um, trying to get funding in place and get everything sorted out for, for that. But it's been a, a great solution. It's a plug and play solution, especially for Aleutian uh, Banner or Aleutian Colleague, uh, which most of our colleges are, are using today. So it's been a very, very successful process for, for everyone involved. Next slide. Thank you very much there, Brian. Certainly. Um, I did uh, get a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, they chatted it in. Um, I've got one asking, uh, does the mobile app include financial aid and the campus safety? For us, yes. I mean, we have uh, the financial aid module is um, an applet within the application. It provides that connectivity. Um, to the same data that a student would see if they are in the ERP on the self-service side. So they see all of the same information, including if there are any forms to be completed, if there are any letters that they need to send back to financial aid for a particular scholarship or grant program. It breaks that data down by scholarship or by grant so they can see exactly where the funds are coming from. Um, all of that's easily available to them. The campus safety feature for us is something that we're working to integrate still. Um, I believe Unified has a campus safety solution. We already had a different product in place that our um, security office wasn't interested in changing. So we're working with them to implement that. But the thing that I love about this platform is it's completely open-ended. Um, Unified will work with you to build any connectivity you desire and uh, it's very easy to do so. So we've not had any issues with that. Um, we're expecting within the next year, in fact, we're working on some changes to our uh, emergency notification platform now to allow students to be able to update all their contact information, everything through self-service. We're going to port all of that functionality back into the mobile app so that, again, they don't have to go to the portal to do it. They can do this directly through the, the web app that, or the mobile app that we have. Thank you. Perfect. And Another question I got was from Justin. Uh, he says, said that you received the grant for the program and what out of the pocket costs were incurred? Okay. Um, the grant offset the licensing cost for us completely. With what we implemented, I think a five year plan for us with our student population, we were um, right at about the 50,000 mark. Um, and that's over five years, so around less than 10000 a year um, is what we've um, expended to implement this. Great. So, uh, Justin, I hope we were able to answer your question. And um, I have one about your letter of intent. Uh, they're asking, what special emphasis did CCTC make in their letter of intent, if you um, recall that? Sure. Uh, probably the, the biggest thing, and of course, you know, we had our, our president, our executive leadership behind this. Um, the biggest thing for us is having no mobile solution whatsoever. Students were demanding it. We're a technical college. And it was a little embarrassing for students to come there expecting it to be a high tech institution and us not actually deliver what our millennial population was really expecting. We have uh, we have an Air Force base, a joint Air Force Army base here in Sumter. Uh, a lot of military attend our, our college uh, institutions here, 
and they expect to have immediate access. They expected to have something that could be downloaded and run on their phone and that they wouldn't have to go to a computer on campus or remote, log in and basically deal with a full PC all of the time. Um, we had no solution in place whatsoever. So meeting that need, meeting our students where they expected us to be was probably the biggest driver for us and trying to provide as much of that information. Of course, other things for us as well were, how can we use this mobile technology smartly in order to handle some of our recruitment needs? We get out in the high schools every year working with, um, we have webinars, we have symposiums, we're on site. Being able to uh, do something to drive that connection where we could get students to download it and we could stay connected with our area high school students to hopefully drive them towards our college as an option as opposed to looking at moving or staying in dorms or going to a four-year institution immediately. Thank you. And last but not least, we've got one from James um, asking how long uh, did, it, uh, did the entire grant application phase take to accessing the actual mobile app? Well, the, the whole grant and application process for us, I mean, we were probably done with that within a month or two. Implementation for us after we went through our state's procurement process, which that's a whole other issue. But after we went through that process, our implementation, uh, we hit the ground running. Um, Unified stayed in touch with us. We had this implemented within six months, and some have done it sooner than that. Um, but once again, because we included more than just our IT department, I had a lot of um, a lot of people to demo, to show, to work through the various application and applet functions, and also all of the branding and styling and so forth to the site with our PR department. So because we had more people than perhaps is typical, it took us a little longer than, uh, than some, but I still felt six months for the product that we turned out um, was excellent. And because we did our due diligence that way and took our time, I think we hit the mark better. Um, we haven't had to back up and go, well, that doesn't work at all. Let's start over or let's get rid of half of these applets and change it or students don't like using any of this. I think we took our time and did a good job with that. We haven't had any of that kind of negative feedback from the way that we went about implementation. Thank you. And I have a couple more from Justin. Um, mm -hmm. He's asking, have you considered any other implementations from a campus consortium? Uh, we have not as yet. Um, in fact, their their repertoire of products has grown since we got started. Um, we have one product that we have acquired um, through one of the campus consortium partners that's uh, a replacement for our aging cast single sign-on. Uh, we want to go with something a little bit easier to, to operate than BEIS. Uh, something also as we move into Office 365, because we have so many different products in place, um, we're we have a quick launch license um, for their single sign-on solution, and uh, we have not yet implemented it. It's actually on our project plan for January, but it should replace our CAS solution. Uh, we've had to use a contractor to maintain that because we don't have that expertise in-house. Um, this is a web-based, cloud-based SSO provide provider. So it allows us to bring that back in-house, save money there, and then also set us up, future-proof us a bit as we move into Office 365 because we don't necessarily want to move with Active Directory Federated Services because of all of the other third-party products that we connect in that don't really support that natively. So we're looking for a solution for that. Um, I know a number of campuses have implemented the um, campus security modules. We have not looked at that, like I said, because we already have something in place. Um, but there are a number of products available. Um, I really can't say enough about about how well the products run and how easy um, the company is to work with and how agile their technicians are at meeting your need. Uh, we've had to make a number of adjustments with our products along the way, sometimes some concessions because of our environment, and they've helped us tool this so that it works smoothly without any failure. All right. And uh, the second uh, part to that question he was a asking was, are you able um, to apply for multiple grants? And the answer to that is, yes, you can. And um, he just pinged again saying, thank you. That makes a lot of sense. So, Brian, thanks to you. And um, the last question that Justin has for us is, what's your strategy for long-term support of the implementation uh, well for us like I mentioned earlier we're we use a survey process with our faculty staff and students to maintain input um, we don't want this to become stale 
So there are changes that, that happen constantly. We get um, questions asked, for instance, it's helped us solve uh, a lot of money issues at the college. Um, we have a new student orientation every fall with all of our new high school students that come through and they're required to attend this. There are a lot of documents, a lot of information they have available. They were either printing this or buying thumb drives and putting it on. They were spending thousands of dollars a semester delivering this information. We centralized it into a landing page and Unified helped us work on that process. So we now have all of that new student orientation data encapsulated in an icon on our app that we simply ask the folks while they're at the NSO if they haven't already downloaded the app, please download it, log in with your credentials, all your new student information is available to you right there. So that's been a big success for us. Those kinds of projects are what we're looking for. And on the IT side, we don't really know what everybody needs. So we have a diverse group um, across the entire campus that helps feed us ideas. And then of course, we're sensitive to our students' needs as well. So we're asking them on their annual survey, what would you like to see in the app? What would make your college experience here um, more enjoyable? And those inputs are what we bring back to that committee annually. We review it and then we prioritize it. Some of the things are development efforts, so we expect to spend some money on it. But we end up prioritizing it based on um, the biggest need and then get a statement of work and then we budget for that. And we try to do that ahead of our budget cycles so that we actually know that we can, can meet those needs in, in small chunks as we continue to enhance the app. Um, we see this as our new um, portal platform. It's used more heavily based on our statistics now than our actual Luminous web portal is. Um, of course, there's information in the web portal that's not ported out here, so students still go to that. But for 90% of what they would come to the portal for, they can now do in the mobile app. Great. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I believe that's all the questions I've gotten so far. And um, what I'd like to show you next is what are the ongoing grants that we have? And um, the ongoing grants currently that we've got are uh, GDPR assessment grant, um, artificial intelligence for enrollment help desk grant, um, financial aid help desk grant, um, Office 365 is going to be coming up soon. And those of you that have actually joined us today, uh, the student engagement mobile app grant is actually going to be live on January 31st till February 18th, but since you've joined us today, uh, we are making that grant available for all of you today. So um, you can go ahead and download that and we will take that into consideration as well. So um, I'd actually like to thank Brian for taking his time today um, for speaking to all of us about their grant uh, that they received. And uh, thank you so much to the audience as well for taking out their time to be with us. And without further ado, I'd like to say thank you so much. Uh, the time is now 2.35 and you guys have the rest of the day and enjoy yourself. And once again, um, do get back to us. If you have any questions, you can always send us an email at grantapplication at campusconsortium.org. Thank you so much. This is Campus Consortium signing off.